When we think of the Beatles, the names John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr come to mind. However, there's a fifth figure whose influence was just as pivotal in shaping the band's legendary status, George Martin, the producer who transformed the Beatles from a promising young group into the greatest band of all time. Take six. How could I dance? She would dance. When we first met George, we loved him because he took a chance on us. No one else would take a chance with a name like that. You come from Liverpool, not a chance in hell. George Martin, his influence was so mighty. Yep. Right, here we go. Okay, Richard. Here yeah. comes the oh, thing. He wasn't there to put his stamp on it. He was there to make this the best recording. You can cut, you can edit, obviously, you can slow down or speed up your, your tape, you can put in backwards type. And this is the kind of thing you can do on recording, which you obviously couldn't possibly do it live because it is, in fact, making up music as you go along. In 1962, George Martin was managing EMI's Parlophone label, known more for novelty records than chart topping hits. The Beatles' audition for Martin was far from spectacular. He later admitted, It was fine, but it wasn't amazing. Yet, it wasn't just their music that caught his attention. Martin was charmed by their humor and wit, particularly George Harrison's cheeky remark about his tie. This personal connection was the spark that led Martin to take a chance on the Beatles. So Brian then had this tape which he hawked around. And I think it was somebody in the HMV shop on Oxford Street knew George Martin and told Brian to go and play the tape to George Martin and then he gave us the audition at um, Abbey Road. I was running Parlophone, which was a small label in England. i have been doing this for about 12 years. In 1962, Brian Epstein walked in my office with a, a record of this group called The Beatles, which I thought was a, such a stupid name. So corny with, with an A. And they weren't very good. I, I, it was a funny kind of sound. And I thought, well, you know, if you want me to judge it on this, forget it. I said, but if you bring them down to the studios and I'll have a look at them, see what happens. I was very blasé about it. And they came in, like, and they came into the studios. And it was like electricity. You know, they, they had this wonderful atmosphere. They had tremendous charisma. They had no great songs with them, but they gave you the feeling that you felt so good for being with them. And when they left, you felt as though something had gone away, you know. I thought, well, if they had this effect on me, they're going to have an effect on everybody else. So I signed them. From their very first recordings, Martin's influence was profound. He didn't merely record the Beatles. He sculpted their sound, transforming raw energy into polished masterpieces. Over seven years, he produced 188 Beatles songs, a feat unparalleled in the music industry. Martin's genius lay in his ability to blend the band's raw talent with his sophisticated production techniques, creating a unique sound that defined an era. George Martin's contributions extended beyond the control room. He played on at least 37 Beatles tracks, adding layers of musical depth with instruments like the piano and organ. His classical training was a treasure trove for the Beatles, enabling them to explore new musical territories. For example, the elegant harpsichord solo on In My Life is a Martin hallmark, adding a Baroque touch to the Beatles' rock foundation. Martin's fingerprints are all over the Beatles' most memorable tracks. Take Yesterday, Yesterday. where McCartney's vocals are backed by a string quartet all arranged by Martin. So this blend of classical and pop was revolutionary, Not showcasing Martin's so ability to innovate. To he said, what do you think then? And I said, well... There's nothing we can do to put on top of this that's going to make it more beautiful, except perhaps some strings. Similarly, the orchestral score for the Yellow Submarine film, entirely composed by Martin, demonstrated his versatility and genius. Another striking example is Eleanor Rigby, where Martin's string arrangement turns a simple tune into a haunting masterpiece. And the Rigby is eight string players, a double string quartet. I think originally Paul wrote on acoustic guitar. Very simple song. He collaborated with my father on doing a string arrangement, and they both loved the work of Bernard Herrmann, who had famously wrote the music for Psycho. And that was the inspiration behind the staccato strings. And in the outtakes, we have an early string session where they're working out how it should be. Three, four, G, B. 
And what's great about this, you hear the collaboration with the players. And I always had this view of, in those days, perhaps string players may be a bit pompous about playing on pop records, because it was unusual, unusual in those times. But they are fully engaged, and they have an opinion, and the music, I suppose, was so good that they were happy to do it. His role in A Day in the Life, from the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, with its dramatic orchestral crescendos, is another testament to his transformative touch. While Lennon and McCartney were the primary songwriters, many Beatles songs bear Martin's compositional imprint. He single-handedly composed six tracks for the Yellow Submarine soundtrack and arranged numerous others. Songs like You Like Me Too Much, with its bluesy piano line, highlight how integral Martin's contributions were to the band's signature sound. In total, George Martin contributed to the writing of at least 49 Beatles songs, making his role much more significant than most fans realize. In those days, in 1965, that is reference to the fact there was a kind of classical piece of music. George Martin's collaboration with the Beatles was nothing short of magical. He seamlessly blended his classical expertise with the band's rock sensibilities, creating a sound that was both innovative and timeless. His unofficial title as the fifth Beatle is more than a nod to his contributions. It's a recognition of his crucial role in their success. George Martin's partnership with the Beatles was a masterclass in musical synergy. His ability to elevate their music with his production skills and classical knowledge was instrumental in their rise to legendary status. While the world celebrates the Beatles, it's essential to remember the man behind the curtain, the secret architect of their iconic sound. George Martin. His legacy lives on in every note, every arrangement, and every timeless song that continues to inspire generations. With his contributions to the writing of at least 49 Beatles songs, George Martin's influence on their music is both profound and undeniable.